Hello everyone, Lance here. I've been working on this one project for quite some time, and during this time I've been researching, experimenting, testing, and tweaking the product to the state that it's in right now. And today, I'm extremely elated to show you the fruit of my labor. Let me tell you one thing. Everything you saw here was procedurally generated using my latest invention. And I call it the World Blender. The World Blender is a collection of geometry and material node group that allow you to quickly generate massive landscapes right inside of Blender with just a few clicks. Now, every real landscape generator needs a particular node and without this node, the landscape generator can only be considered third rate at best. And that particular node is right here, the erosion node, and I made it myself. Now this one node actually took the majority of time I work on this project, so it's quite a big deal, for me at least. This erosion node is the heart of the World Blender generator. Without it, you can only generate the bedrock layer. But with the erosion node, you can simulate the natural flow of water that erodes the rock into dirt and carries the dirt down the mountain. Let me show you what I mean. This is a landscape that I generated with just a few clicks. And let me show you what it looks like. All right, this is what it looks like. And uh, let me show you the geometry node setup. As you can see, we only have like three nodes. This is the uh, create landscape node, and this is the displacement node and the erosion node. Let me show you what this landscape looks like without the erosion. So deactivate it. And as you can see, we only have the bedrock here. And uh, it's just a um, amateur looking kind of landscape. And let me turn back on the erosion node. As soon as I turn on the erosion node, Blender is going to freeze for a while because this is a physics simulation node, so it's going to take some time. Uh, this particular landscape is a 512 by 512, so it's going to take about 17 seconds. And uh, every time you double the uh, res resolution, the simulation time will increase by about 4 to 5 times. So for a 2K landscape, it's going to take about uh, 5 to uh, 10 minutes. And for a 4K landscape, it's going to take about 30 minutes with my computer. So uh, it's going to take some time because it's physics simulation. And uh, let me go to the shader editor and show you the different data channel that the uh, simulation node generated. And this is the uh, dirt map. And this is the wear map. The wear map shows you where the rocks are broken down and uh, where the rocks are not broken. And this is the convexity map. This map shows you the uh, pointiness or the concave areas of the mountain. Now this convexity map was generated by another node, not the erosion node, but uh, more on that later. This is the flow map. This shows you the path of the water down the mountain. Now, this flow map is the path of water during the final cycle of simulation. And we also have the inflow, which is the normalized flow of all the, the cycles combined together. Now, I personally find the flow channel to be more useful than the inflow, but who knows? Maybe someone can get some result out of this inflow channel. And finally, we have the water map. This shows you the uh, areas where the water kind of pulled together. So that's how the erosion node works. And without the erosion node, the landscape can only be rocks. 
So that's the overview about the World Blender node. Now, let me show you the full extent of the entire World Blender project. These are the geometry nodes, and these are the material nodes. Let me go back to the geometry nodes. We have three different create landscape nodes, begins with C. We have create landscape from scratch and create landscape from object, as well as create a landscape from an image. And next we have a bunch of different displacement nodes. We have a bunch of different noises and we have some height processing nodes. And among the height processing nodes, we have the erosion node, the heart of the world blender. And next we have the utility nodes. These nodes generally deal with attributes. And we have the helper nodes. These are some uh, random functionalities that does not fall into any category. And finally, we have the textures node. You can use these textures to create uh, whatever you want. And maybe you can create uh, displacement or you can create some masking and stuff. Now let's take a closer look at the displacement nodes. And we can see that the displacement nodes have these uh, pass-through outputs. And these pass-through outputs kind of pass through the inputs without changing anything. For example, if you want to use the same texture coordinate as the previous node, you can just connect the pass-through vector to the uh, input vector of the next node. And for another next node, you can also pass through like that. And you can also pass through the landscape like this to uh, continuously stack together a bunch of different displacement. And you can also pass through the mask as well as the height channel, like so. Now, this technique allows you to uh, create very clean landscape without uh, any jungle of wires. So, these are the World Blender nodes. The World Blender nodes are available on my Gumroad and Blender Market. I'll put the links in the description. Please consider buying if your project requires some awesome landscape. Thank you. In the next several tutorials, I'm going to focus on showing you how to use these World Blender node to generate all kinds of awesome landscape. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. All right, let me just go in and uh, lower the mountains and see what it looks like. Let's say 500 meters. It took 17.425 seconds. Let's see. There we go.